Hello there, my name is Isma. So today we're going to be starting our training series uh, for animation, for doing animation in Blender 2.8. And uh, yeah, so this is part one and uh, yeah, let's get started. Yes, so what I'm going to do is that uh, if you, I'm going to be creating, saving our project files uh, that uh, you can download uh, from my Patreon page, if you are Patreon, and uh, you can look at uh, the animation or the project file if you want to look at them like that. And uh, also you'll be supporting me and uh, making me able to continue making these tutorials. Yeah, so let's get into it and uh, get started. So let me first save this as, let me I'll create a new folder. I'll call this animation series. And I'll call this one. So I'll be uploading this blend file uh, to my uh, Patreon page if you want to get it and uh, you can get it and examine how the project looks. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, so uh, this is the default scene and uh, we're not going to add in anything. We're going to start with this cube and animate it. Uh, yeah, so let's get started because this is a, a, a basic uh, training series. So yeah, so we have the 3D space here and uh, we have the timeline here and uh, we have the playback buttons here. So if you hit uh, this uh, forward uh, button here, it will play the animation and you can see the timeline indicator uh, playing around or moving throughout the timeline. And uh, so we have these uh, indicators here. These are just frames and uh, by default, your animation is going to be 25 frames per second. So every second uh, in here, Every second will have 25 frames, and uh, so the entire time uh, timeline here has two 250 uh, frames, uh, which adds up to about 10 seconds. So, if you want to increase or decrease uh, or reduce your timeline, uh, you will see the start and end uh, frame here. So, you can start it uh, at an earlier and at a later uh, time frame, or you can end it uh, to whatever frames you want so let's bring it back to z to one uh, does it start at zero yeah let's start it at zero and edit at 250 so if you want it to be more than 10 seconds say you want it to be 20 seconds you can just multiply by 10 by is it by 20 hmm, by two sorry by two uh, to get it to 20 seconds and this will be 20 seconds uh, so if you don't want to look at uh, frames uh, there is an option to view uh, just uh, seconds uh, you can see show seconds here and uh, it will show you how many seconds you are looking at so let's see you can see this is showing 20 instead of showing 20 seconds it's showing 20 21 seconds uh, I guess because we are starting at I don't know it should be yeah I think it yeah it is this is 21 21 seconds it should be 20 seconds but uh, I'm not sure why it's showing 21 instead of 20 actually is it no uh, you know I, I don't know but it's supposed to be so 250 is 10 seconds and then as you can see hmm, is 10 seconds and then 500 is 20 seconds so if you want to multiply let's say if you want uh, 40 seconds you just multiply this by 2 again to have 1000 uh, seconds which should give you uh, 40 seconds but for some reason it's giving you it's giving us uh, 41 maybe because our starting point is is uh zero i don't know but uh, it should be 25 frames are equal equaling to one second so 10 so 250 should be uh 10 seconds anyway that's the timeline uh, uh it's very hard to fill a timeline of uh, 40 seconds so let's keep it at uh, 25 uh so of uh, 10 seconds and uh play around with this so uh, on these playback buttons, you see we have the play, uh, we have rewind, uh, we have skip, uh, is it? Skip to the next keyframe, but uh, we don't have any keyframe, so that's why it's 
giving us an error here and uh, skip to the end or beginning there. We also have the record button and the way this works is that uh, it will record any movement or any yeah any movement you have in your scene uh, from one frame to another. So if we say if we get the move tools here and uh, hit record here and uh, move this like there, you can see it has recorded and added keyframes on that frame. So if we move our timelines and the way you move your this timeline indicator uh, is you right click on this you right click in the timeline indicator and uh, if you drag uh, this it will be dragging the timeline indicator and uh, this will also uh, move uh, the frame you are on so if you want to move this to say nine seconds you can just right click uh, right click on this frame here or you can just drag to that frame so let's move to about five seconds here and uh, move uh, this to a different location so if we go back to the first frame you can see now we have that playing back now because we don't have any other keyframes here uh, we ca we don't see anything happening there so yeah we, we're not only limited to position and posi uh, to moving the object we can also rotate this uh, so if we go back to the first frame and you can see now these are working because we have uh, keyframes because uh, these keys here jump you to the next or previous keyframe so let's go back to the previous keyframe now if we use the rotation tool uh, we can rotate this like that it will continue re recording as long as you have uh, this record button switched on so if we play back you can see because we didn't have a uh, because this keyframe recorded uh, this object at that position and rotation, uh, we don't have this just rotates back to that position original position we had. So we can also add more keyframes here. Maybe rotate this like that. And uh, what happens is that uh, by default it's recording everything is re recording the position rotation and scale so and uh, you can see under the transformation when when the, the value is yellow like this it means that uh, it has been recorded as a keyframe at that particular uh, frame so when we move this timeline indicator to a different frame you can see they will turn into green uh, indicating that that value uh, that uh, attribute of yeah is it yeah attribute or yeah, I think it's called an attribute or value has keyframe or has been recorded before but uh, on that particular keyframe you are on there is no keyframe for that so what I mean here is that uh, you can see if we go back to the previous keyframe here it indicates that uh, that these values here all these values here have have been recorded have keyframes on that frame but uh, when we move it forward green shows or indicates that uh, <coughs> or indicates that uh, uh, though this has keyframe has keyframe these values have keyframes recorded uh, they don't have keyframes recorded for that particular keyframes they might have a keyframe recorded in the previous frame or in the or in the next frame but uh, on this particular frame uh, for instance this seven seventh frame on our timeline has no keyframe so if we add a keyframe by moving this object or making any changes uh rotation changes or scale uh, changes it will indicate that uh, this now has keyframes on that particular frame and uh, they have been recorded and they will be also indicated in the timeline as those diamonds yellow diamonds <coughs> another way to uh, to confirm a keyframe or to add keyframes so you can see uh, we have added uh, scale keyframes but uh, they have also recorded uh, the rotation and the position, though we only added a scale keyframe. Let me try this again here, where we don't have any further keyframes. Uh, if we, if I scale this, if I scale this, uh, I want to scale it in in all directions. So I'll just drag in the middle here. You can see, I've just scaled it, but it has added keyframes for the X. Uh, the location, rotation, and scale as well, but uh, I only wanted uh, the scale keyframes. Uh, so the way to do that is uh, let me s let me show. Okay. 
Okay, let me, I think, uh, hmm. Okay, so in previous versions of Blender, uh, Blender 2.7, there was a drop down list here to show you how uh, to select what you wanted to, to record, but uh, I think it was moved. So let me see, we have the interpolation. I think this is, uh, we have all 3D editor, old editors, t -t 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 -t. So I think it has been moved somewhere uh, because of the change, but uh, anyway, so you can also, if you don't want everything recorded, you can also just uncheck uh, those diamonds here uh, so that only the scale uh, keyframes are recorded on that particular frame. So you can also come back here. Let's find somewhere where we had rotation keyframes. So we see we had rotation keyframes here. So we can also come in and uh, remove uh, those keyframes there. Has that removed them? Oh, it's is showing that uh, this different color, color, I don't know why. But uh, yeah, so that's another way to remove the keyframes. And you can see now, when we come to this uh, time, uh, uh, frame in the timeline, it doesn't show that, uh, it shows that uh, this here doesn't have, uh, has no keyframes recorded at that particular frame, rate, uh, frame. So yeah, in the next lesson, we'll go back, we'll come back and uh, see more advanced features in the animation.